What's going on, y'all? R&B Divas LA Season 2, Episode 7. Let me just tell y'all this. This episode really wasn't much, but in my opinion, it was a good episode. And you want to know why I say it was a good episode? Because once again, even though it had its little catty moments, everybody kind of came together. And especially at the end, when they rolled out for Michelet, I was like, that's how you fucking do it. Put your motherfucking pride and whatever issue that you got going on with each other. Put that shit to the side. And, um... Put that shit to the side and, and just just ride out for your girl. Because you y'all, they stood up for what the fuck was right. Because that shit was wrong at the end, what they tried to do to Michelet. But, um, you know, it starts off, and I say this was one of the better episodes in a way, because um, they were actually in the goddamn studio doing the music for the Puerto Rico trip. Uh, uh, tourism thing, whatever the fuck it is. And I was just sitting here like, finally, they start the episode... With them doing that. And I said, here we go. Now we get to see. Now we seen Warren Campbell on Mary Mary show. And, and, and seeing how he worked his magic. Doing the gospel. And getting Mary Mary ahead. Getting his wife ahead. Now we get to see him doing it in another you know, genre. And he put that spin on that damn Puerto Rican song. Um, the song for the Puerto Rico tourism thing. And the way that he just... Oh, I was just like pussing the reggae tongue on that shit. And it just made it, it made my heart proud, you know what I'm saying? And I was just like, this shit sounds good as fuck. At first I was like, okay, pick this up a little bit. I hit a little um Spanish influ um Spanish stuff, and then all of a sudden we get it up and it's like it picks up and it just you know, you just wanna jam to it. And I was like, okay. And then the girl started, you know, coming in on their parts and stuff, and I was like, this is what they needed. They got the right producer because he didn't fuck around, went on ahead and got the shit done. So, you know, on the last week's episode, he was basically, either it was last week or the week before, when he was like putting all six of y'all as lead, it don't sound right. It's going to be like, um, we are the world or whatever. So at first, I think a couple of them, especially Shantae, you know, had an issue with that saying, how come we all can't sing lead? I think that would really work. But, you know... Eventually, they came to a little conclusion. Shantae, she sang the background vocals, right? And it was real soft and everything. And, you know, Shantae voice put her little flavor on it, kind of sexy a little bit. And then they wanted Shantae to come in, not Shantae, but Chrisette to come in and, and sing her little uh, solo part, I guess. And then it's going to start off. Everything started off like real slow, real smooth, real sexy, real chill, and everything. I was just like, oh my God, when uh, Shantae, not Shantae, but all he sees. When Chrisette Michelle got up in that booth, I just said, God damn, chills just running through me. Like, I need to get this. Somebody strip those vocals and let me put this shit on my iPod because her little part just alone, and then. You know, put Claudette in the background repeating what she's saying in Spanish. I was just like, bitch, you fan as fuck. And then you're going to speak Spanish. Come on now. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to go there, but y'all can figure that shit out. But um, I'm telling you, it's the accents. And you know, that Puerto Rican So It just does something to me. It just does something to me. Look, I have a favorite... I have somebody that I latch on to on each of these seasons, okay? And um, uh, Atlanta, it was Therese. You know, I don't understand what that was, but she's just fan as fuck to me, okay? And it's just, I don't know. It's, and it's not really my type of who I would, but hey, you know, hmm, I wonder what's going on with her anyway. But then on here, it's always been Claudette, because Claudette is just, she's just gorgeous. Y'all, I'm not going to do this. Because I did that all on Atlanta season, and I'm just I'm just not going to do that. But anyway, Lil Mo get up in there, and she do a rap. And now, and, and right before they started, when they was doing all this, before Lil Mo got in there, I was like, man, put, put like a reggaeton beat on there, and then it really popped, because you know that's where it's from, Puerto Rico, reggaeton. And next thing you know, Lil Mo get up on there, and it was like a little reggaeton beat going in, 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 uh, in the song, too. And she started rapping. I wasn't expecting her to actually rap. And I was like, okay, you know, it's fine. Layla get in there and she's singing like, you know, with the uh, Spanish accent. And um, it was cute. She had little difficulties at first, but she got it done. Everybody was fine with what they did. 
They thought the record was done and all Warren had to do was go, y'all, y'all realize how excited I just got. I just realized that myself. You know, I was just real excited. <laughs> Bitch, what? I was really excited to talk about this shit. You know, it just warms my heart. But, um, let me just tell <laughs> Yeah, all like, bitch, what the fuck? Are you drunk? No, I'm completely sober, okay? I've been sober. I've been sober for the past few days. <sighs> no alcohol. First of all, because I ain't got none in the house. Second of all, I'm... Um... But anyway... <laughs> no, seriously. Anyway, so they thought the um stuff... I was looking at something. Let me turn this over. They thought that the show... I mean, the song was done. Warren was just going to have to mix it, and then it was all over. Shantae Moore. She kind of... Wreck the flow just a little bit because she want to say that she wanted a little solo part. She wanted a lead vocal part. She don't just want to play background. And Lil Mo in the confessions like, um, so now you want to just don't want to play background. Now you see how we didn't want to play background on your song. And I'm like, but that was her song. And this is a, in the, a this is a group effort that, but you know, this song belongs to everybody. But I don't know. I don't know. Can you compare the two? But. I mean, everybody put their voice on there. So, you know, I thought it was fine the way that it was. But, hey, you know, of course, Shantae wanted to put her thing on there. And, you know, she went behind, Um, I guess, I'm not going to say she went behind everybody's back. But I'm pretty sure that they didn't know that she went back into that studio with Warren and um did that. Mm -hmm. uh, he made a little, you know, way for her to put the vocals on there. And, you know, she was doing the eyes and oohs and all this stuff in there. And next thing you know, she did a little whistle note. And Warren stopped that track and said, what you just do? And she was like, a whistle. You just put a whistle up in there? Okay, I want you to do it. At first, the way he kind of shaded her in a little bit. Because when he first said, wait a minute, was that a whistle? You did that? That came out of your mouth? Oh, okay. Now we're going to do this again and I want you to do it without the whistle. I said... You get her excited like you was proud that she put that in there and going to tell her, do it again without your whistle. And I was sitting here like, you know what? The whole time I was sitting here and I was watching this and I said, in my head, I'm like, she's only wanting this solo part so that she can do a whistle note. Because y'all know, Shantae got to put a whistle in there somewhere. Just like Mariah got to put a whistle in the song somewhere, Shantae the same way. And sure enough, she tried it. She tried it, but it didn't stay. You know, A for effort, but mm-mm. We caught on. And, um, you know, they had the song together. Lil Mo and Leela, they go to this pool, uh, pole dancing class. And, you know, I guess at this point, Lil Mo is divorced finally. And she got cobwebs down in her cuckoo. And, you know, she's just trying to, you know, sexy it up for whoever the fuck comes along, you know, in this particular time. Because we already know she's in a relationship. And then, once again, they started talking about, you know, what was going on in the studio and how uh, she felt about them, uh, Shantae, trying to get a part on the song, a bigger part on the song or whatever. And I was just like, oh, leave it alone. And, I mean, honestly, they could have, how do y'all feel about the rap part of the song? I mean, I could have did without it and I could do it with it, but, you know, if anything, they could have took part of the rap out in the input, you know, gave her a little lead vocal on that one or, you know, kept it the way that they did. How y'all feel about it? But, um, Shantae, she's out on a date with her boy toy, Roy. And I was like, oh, is his name Roy or Ray? Either way, it's an R and it ends with a Y, you know, out with him. He's from New Orleans and, you know, he came out there to kick it with her and they on this little boat, on this yacht, and just having fun with one another and, and, and quiet it down. And I was like, okay, fine. Next week, we're going to see some shit with her, you know, just getting all out of order, whatever. She just like, she got a man. She don't give a fuck no more. Um, and I can't wait to see what happened to her because she wound up going to the hospital. Like, she was just sitting there crying and like she couldn't move or whatever. She needs to, oh, Lord Jesus. You know, I just want to know what happened. But, um... After that, everybody, Michelle has this performance that she was supposed to be doing. And they, the, you know, she's going through management. Michelle's uh, storyline on this episode was her switching from her old management, Donald, to a new manager. I don't remember his name, but Boo was kind of cute. I said, oh, hmm. okay. You know, and, um. 
they trying to figure stuff out. They trying to, you know, get him acclimated to how Michelet works and, you know, what's going on with her business and they having this business meeting and they talking or whatever. So at this time, it's a confusing time for Michelet and, and everything that's going on. But they trying to make it work. So in the midst of this, after Donald leaves, there was an event that, you know, um, Michelet was put on to perform at. And she gets to the venue. This guy is on stage, you know, acting like he's the MC, like he's introducing folks and everything on there. And Michelle walks up and she's like, who are you? And he was like, I'm Mr. Valentine. And I'm like the MC and I'm the uh, comedian or whatever that's going to be on him. I'm the one that's going to introduce you and all that shit. So he was kind of shocked when she came in there. Like, I wasn't expecting you to be here or I wasn't expecting to see you right now. And, you know, I, that caught me a little bit off guard a little bit like, hmm. And right then and I just knew some fuckery was going to go on because of the way that Michelle was talking and the way that she was um, asking these questions about, you know, who idea was it to put the R&B divas on the, um, the flyer and then why is his picture bigger than hers? If she is supposed to be like the headlining act, the reason why people really come in there to see this event is because they want to hear this girl sing. And it's like you're promoting yourself over her, and that's not the way that it was presented to her. It was presented to her as if she was. Mm. It was presented to her as if, like I said, she. It was about her, like she was the headline, like she was the star. Now, whoever did this business shit, they fucked up, and I think the dude was named Erol or something, Errol or whatever, and. He's supposed to be Michelle's CFO. You know, he's the one that handles the money and all this stuff. So when um, when Michelle was talking to, did I call her Michelle? Well, Michelle was talking to Valentine. She was like, did you contact the people, these pe the, the women's um, managers and stuff like this to get their permission to uh, put them on here and say that they was coming over here? Because, you know, you just put me in a, a a bad situation, a funny situation, because I don't want them to feel like I'm trying to use them when that wasn't the case, because all of this is a surprise to me. And he was like, you know, I talked to so-and-so, and they said that they talked to the managers and got all this um, um, permission and everything, and everything's good. She was like, okay, fine. Well, I'm going to have to talk to the girls and see what's going on. She was sitting there talking to this other guy that I think is her um, on her management team, who actually was looking out for her best interest and was like, we're going to get to the bottom of this because something is not making sense. This is not right and all that. And now they had to tell the girls. The girls come in and she's sitting down and she's telling them. And right off the bat, they went off and they did not go off on Michelle. And I appreciate the fact that Michelle went to them with this news before, before she got on stage. All right. And she came to them correct. She came to them like an adult. She came to them like a friend. And she came to them business-wise and was like, this is what's happening. I had no idea that this was going on. This all seems funny to me. I wanted to let y'all know that they are using your image to promote this stuff. You know, because looks can be deceiving. Regardless of who you said may be on this uh, flyer to supposed to sing. You put all of their images on there, and if I saw some shit like that, you know, sometimes people don't read shit. They go by what they see, you know, pictures and images. And if I see all of them on there, I'm going to be up there expecting like, oh, shit, they going to be here, so that means that they going to sing. I don't give a fuck about seeing them. I want to hear you sing, okay? Probably what everybody else probably was going to think, you know? And they trying to cover their tracks like this is not what's happening. I'm not going to get up here and sing. We not here to sign, you know sign autographs or whatever or whatever you trying to um promote whatever and then they was like why the fuck is his picture bigger than yours and why is our pictures bigger than yours and why does it say in very fine print that you're gonna be singing and i was like y'all catching all this shit and here's the thing dude come in there and you know they start talking right off the bat chris set got him together you know chris set started it off she was like, excuse me, but why is my image, you know, on this flyer when I didn't approve and neither one of us approved? If this is supposed to be for Michelle, her image is supposed to be on here, not ours. Because usually when I do appearances like this, I do appearances for thirty to $35,000. I said, Psst, bitch, 
you better go there. <laughs> you better go there. If I'm going to be here and on this flyer, you better give me my money for it. Because what y'all don't understand is this is business one-on-one, -on -one, baby. This is copyright infringement, okay? You're using someone's image slash likeliness without their permission, and people get sued for that. Look at all the news of all these rappers and, you know, entertainers who have been suing these different companies, these small companies or whatever, who think that they can get away with, you know, either uh, um, um, using somebody's image or using their song without getting that permission. That's why when you do samples or songs and shit, you have to get the permission too because that's copyright infringement. And most people try to go around that shit because they know that they got to give them money to do that. Plus, you know, it takes out of their pocket the money of the profit that they're going to get. And they don't want to do that. So that's why they try to do it sneakily. And, um, Michelle went the fuck off like, bitch, hold up. Dude was just standing there like, I don't get what you're talking about. And was like, you know, he told me this. Who told you this? Who told you all this? Eero or Arrow, whatever the fuck his name is, dude in the glasses. He just standing there looking all sneaky. Like something ain't right. And you said that you talked to everybody. They sitting there refuting the fact that they didn't get no message. Nobody knew about this. And then at one point in time, Valentine, he want to get up in his uh, feelings like, wait a minute, y'all not going to do this. Seem like you attacking me. So what is the problem? Y'all come here all dolled up. because. And I was like, no, bruh, don't even do it. They came dolled up because they came to support their friend. They didn't come here to see you. They didn't come here for this event as a whole. They came to support their friend. Y'all just got caught up in some bullshit that Miss Lay had noticed that, you know, Eero or Arrow, whatever the fuck is E, okay, E with the sunglasses, he was texting, and she was like, I'm pretty sure he texting Valentine. Valentine texted him because he kept looking up like, bitch, what? You know? And, you know, they trying to say that Donald set this up and all this stuff. Donald was the old manager. And I was like, something ain't right with this. Something ain't right. Michelle been up in his business, and all these women at this table been up in his business a long-ass time to know when they being played. And they tried to play the fuck out of them, and they got caught up. They got fucking caught up and all this shit got caught on camera. So this is how you do your business? Really? Really? Come on now. And then you're going to you sign off to put this, to let this air? Okay. But, you know, she was pissed off. And when Shantae, when he said that shit about y'all got dolled up, Shantae said, oh, hold up. This is not going to go down. She got the fuck up and said, when you use my image... And you supposed to be promoting her? Why is her image so small that we can barely see it? And your image is right here. This is for her. I've been in this game too damn long. Okay? I was like, Shantae, you better fucking go off. I was very much here for Shantae at that moment. I said, girl, you are slowly trying to bring it back to home to when I really liked your ass. Go ahead, bitch. You're showing it. And then, you know, he was like, fuck it. We're going to figure this out. Are you still performing? Miss Shalay was like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> so she was when they left out they discussed the thing about them texting because Miss Chalette called them out and was like put your phones away and I said you better do that 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 little voice got deep put your shit away because we talking okay we fucking talking and um you know the guy that was sitting with Miss Chalette was like let me just tell you this it wasn't Donald because I'm looking at the flyer, Donald had, it's a whole bunch of information on this flyer that Donald had no knowledge of. Because all this happened after Donald left. So, you know who it was. It was e -roll or Errol or whatever the fuck, E. It was him that did this shit. I said, Lord Jesus. But, you know, Michelle, she went off in that hallway like, she was like, I can't, they, they just was dicking her over. I said, why y'all keep fucking her over like this? And she just, y'all know she emotional. Y'all know she got issues. And this is part of the reason why the bitch got problems. You know, so she had every right to be up in her feelings. But, you know, I, I applaud the fact that she didn't take it out on the people that actually did come and see her and did not get out there and perform. And she actually got out there. She didn't even make it seem like something was going on because when she got out there, I would kind of say that this is probably one of the best performances I've seen Michelle do out this whole series. You know, she sounded nice. She sounded good. You know, even in the studio when she did her little part, she sounded real nice for her. And y'all know, because, you know, them little intro. 
I'm like, girl, stop playing. Every time she do her intros, I gotta laugh. It just it just takes me there. And um, you know, she got out there and performed her motherfucking ass off. And I was like, good job for that one. But yeah, next week, Shantae gonna go to the hospital. Whew, Lamo gonna get to it, I think, with somebody. Girl, child, it's gonna be some drama. I can't wait. But this episode seven, and I'm gonna be honest. It's not as much drama on this season as I thought it would be, like they hyped it up to be, because we only got three more episodes left. And I mean, what, y'all finna pack all the drama into the last three episodes? And I'll I be damned if this is a two-part reunion. It needs to just be one so far from what I'm seeing. But y'all tell me how y'all felt about the episode, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.